Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about The Minister's Black Veil, written by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work by Nathaniel Hawthorne, we get introduced to this character by the name of Hooper. Hooper is this minister, this preacher, this church leader that, you know, he's the, the normal, the average uh, minister you would encounter. The, the minister, the preacher, you know, who sees over weddings, funerals, um, he goes to people's houses when they're sick. Um, he goes to people's um, houses within his church for dinner, uh, to see them, to visit them. Um, you know, the first description that we get of Hooper is this um, preacher who's full of life. He's laughing. He's, you know, everybody in the community knows him. He's been preaching for years. Um, we're told that he wasn't a, you know, a revolutionary preacher. He wasn't, he didn't stand out in the crowd. He was just he was, he was there. He was doing his job. He was doing his public service. Um, the story is set in Milford in Massachusetts within the 19th century. Um, and the first description, again, the first description is just normal, but it, it doesn't stay that way. Um, at the beginning of the short story, we're told by Nathaniel Hawthorne that there has been another preacher that um, wore a veil on his face, right? A, a veil covering his face because he killed someone. So, you know, to kind of like pay for his own sin or to hide from his shame or, uh, you know, I guess in other way for redemption, he puts a veil on his face. Well, Hooper, within the short story, he does the same thing. He puts a veil on his face and this changes the story completely. So basically, you know, at first, as, as I already told you guys, you know, he's normal, he's average, he's doing his job, um, nothing special about him, just your average preacher, average minister, right? Uh, and then one day, right, this Sunday morning where everybody is lining up to go to church, all the girls are dolled up, they have their, their gowns and dresses, and everyone's wearing their Sunday best, the men are wearing their suits, the kids are well dressed up and cleaned up, uh, the young men are flirting with the young women, they're looking at the young women, people are thinking about marriage, about life, about success, you know, the normal things that people usually think about on a daily basis, and everybody's in other way in a, in, a, in a good mood because you know this is Puritan times um, and everybody's going to church they're going to praise God and, and hear the good word um, and everybody's happy everybody's just on their way to church but then Hooper comes right Hooper comes and he's not lo looking the way he should um, he comes with a veil on his face covering the top of his face all the way down to his nose, maybe like to the top of his lip. The veil, it's like a two cloths, two dark cloths. And they say that within the, the, the story, we, we know that he can blow on the veil so his breath can reach the veil. Um, and it just doesn't cover his mouth and his chin. Um, if, you, if you saw the thumbnail for this video, um, you kind of see how I had the top of my face wrap. I don't have a veil, I don't own one. Uh, but, you know, I had my face covered and just my mouth and, and my chin were just left open. So, you know, that's kind of, that can help you get the idea of what Hooper was doing. But he had a veil, so it was kind of hanging down, um, not, not tied on his head. Um, so Hooper is just creeping everyone out. Everything just changes. It's like when you're out on a sunny day and then, you know, it gets closer to night and everything just turns dark, right? Hooper was this happy, you know, character in the community that everyone loved. And now he shows up a Sunday morning with his face, to, you know, covered. And everybody's just asking questions. Everybody's saying, why is this happening? Everybody's saying, why is our minister, why is his face covering? Is he hiding something? Did he kill someone? Did he commit some type of crime? Um, the mood changes. You know, every, you know, women leave the church because they can't take it. They're like this is too much. Um, he, he walks into the church. He says hello to everyone the same way he's done for years. Um, there, there have been people, that, you know, there are people in the church that have known him his entire life. They don't know what's going on. Everybody's asking questions. Um, some people are literally almost saying the devil has come into the church. 
it's just not a pretty scene. This is a small church um, in Milford, Massachusetts. It's, it's, you know, it's the 19th century. These, these are Puritans, right? They're all about acting the way you should to go to heaven. The Puritans are all about um, you have to do good because you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to face damnation. Um, again, Massachusetts, this is where the, the witch trials happen. Um, the Puritans did not play. If you didn't follow the rules as a, as a Christian, if you didn't dress properly, if you didn't act properly, if you didn't read your Bible and pray properly, you were on the chopping block. So this this minister, this this person that the whole community trusted, you know, it's he just shows up. You know, everybody trusts this man, and he just shows up with his half of his face gone or covered, which is menacing. Now, if you think about human interactions. Our face say a lot of things. You know, we communicate with our face. We, our mood um, is, you know, our face depicts um, what we feel in our mood. Um, so if I smile and I have my half my face covered, although a smile is supposed to be a gentle, a welcoming thing, but if half my face is covering covered, it might seem some, like something else. It might seem dark. And it, and it to these people, no matter how um, Hooper acts, no matter what he does. It, it seems unnerving. It's creepy. It's it's not something everybody's used to. So if he laughs, if he if he smiles, whatever he does with his face under the veil, it just comes off as ominous um, and you know unwelcoming. So if he goes into the church. Everybody takes their seats. Some again, some women leave, uh, but he delivers the sermon. And some people, the sermon just you know sends arrows, shoots arrows to their souls, right? Um, and he, he's not known to be a, a great preacher, but this sermon that he delivers, um, as soon as he puts the veil on, you know, it, it just touches everyone. Um, and everybody is just wondering what's going on. So, you know, the church ends, um, he doesn't get invited to dinner. Um, like he usually, you know, gets invited to dinner. Everybody in the town, everybody in the church just goes everywhere and just starts spreading rumors and gossip and saying that, you know, maybe Hooper committed a sin. Maybe he killed someone. Maybe he did something bad. Maybe he did something so hideous, so um, atrocious that, you know, we, we have to figure it out. Um, we have to make him take off the veil. What happened? What happened? And, you know, everything just turns upside down. So what happens is in the town, they send different parties to, to his home and to, to him uh, to figure out what's going on. Can he take it off? Because, you know, everybody's uncomfortable. He goes to a wedding and the, the bride just turns pale. He goes to a funeral and some women says, you know, the dead body moved when, when Hooper approaches the dead body. And for a, a little small for a small while, it seems as if the dead body saw Hooper's face and somebody said, oh, the body moved because there's something hideous or something devilish behind the, the veil. Um, so rumors are flying all about. Everybody's saying this and this. People are making rumors. People are saying they saw him do this and that. Um, so it just gets dark. And, and Hooper, he doesn't reveal to us why he's wearing the veil. Um, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about that in the analysis, but it's just, this is just happening. Um, so they try to, to make him take it off. Other ministers, other preachers from other towns, um, come to talk to him, try to ask him, why is he doing this? Um, why is he not taking it off? And he's, you know, he, he defends himself and he never takes it off. Um, his engagement, he, he was supposed to get married to this um, girl by the name of Elizabeth that was supposed to be his bride, but the, the engagement um, breaks off. They break it off because he won't even reveal his face to Elizabeth, um, and she doesn't want to live with a man that has half of his face covered, and, and also she's afraid of the veil. Everyone's afraid of the veil because it's kind of like in of a way, reminding them of their, their secret sins, right? The, this whole short story has this thing going about secret sins, the things that we hide from God, the things that we hide from our loved ones, the sins that we hide from each other, the sins that we hide from the public. And he kind of says this is all in vain because God is the judge of sins. God is the judge of all the things that we do wrong and we can't hide anything from him. So he's kind of saying like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in of a way showing what you are, you know, what everybody in this church is and everybody around me is because we're all hiding 
um, behind veils and we're all hiding behind our sins or we're, we're trying to like um, dig a hole and, and put our sins in it and try to forget about it and, and make sure that no one ever finds out about it. You know, the things that you do alone, the things that um, you do when nobody's watching, you know, he's kind of talking to that, um, the secret sins of your heart, right? Um, so whenever, you know, Hooper is coming to a store or wherever he goes within this town. He, to me, while I was reading this, it's, it's almost like he's the Grim Reaper, right? Because you have this minister coming and, you know, ministers are always dressed in, in, in proper clothing and half of his face is covering. So ministers, they're not going to have, um, you know, they're going to have their, their bodies well covered, right? They're not, they're not going to, um, you know, wear loose clothing. Um, so, you know, their body is, is going to be covered, and so his body is covered and his face is literally, it's just his mouth that you can see in his chin. So imagine you, you're coming across him at night or, or in a road by yourself. It can be scary. It can be, again, unnerving. Um, so everyone, he becomes isolated. He becomes by himself. I mean, he still does his duties around the town. Um, he still preaches, but his pre, like, I mean, people start requesting him when they're on their deathbed. Sinners confess their, their sins to him. Uh, people want to hear his sermons because they think that he is pure. He is pious. He is, um, you know, kind of like leaving all of the world's sins behind. Um, so he becomes more famous, more wanted. Um, he, he leaves the idea of, you know, the idea of him being an average preacher and average minister kind of like just just that's eradicated um and he becomes this well-known this this father hooper that is you know a way that it has taken himself away from from all the the sin some people even say that um you know people who get converted they say that um when they were in sin they were behind the veil with hooper but once they 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 came to jesus christ or or you know they converted to christianity now they're they're not behind the veil anymore so he becomes this this symbol this character that people judge themselves by within the community um he lives his entire life like that i mean he lives by himself he never gets married never has children um everybody some people are envious of him um and some people are afraid of him uh because he becomes this character of we don't know what's really going on here we don't know if he's he's a great sinner or if he's the most pious man, the most religious man, the most pure man on earth. Um, he ends up dying and he wouldn't even let people take off his veil. He wouldn't let um, the other ministers take off his veil. And he goes to the grave saying, you all hated me. You all stayed away from me because of a, of a piece of cloth, because of a dark piece of cloth. Why did you guys, you know, treat me like this when we you all you all have cloths you all have dark cloths on your face because you're you're hiding your sins from your lovers from god from from you know the public world when you know you're hiding it in your closet you're hiding it you're burying it when you're all sinners in secret and he says that's all in vain because again god can see all of that so he's buried the cloth never comes off and and the last line pretty much kind of said the last line of the short story kind of says that the veil is probably still in his, on the dust of his face in his grave and grass has grown in his grave. Um, and the story ends like that. Elizabeth never stops loving him. Um, she never married him, but she never stopped loving him. Um, so he died isolated and alone, but he stayed true to his morals and to, and to his, you know, his beliefs. Um, in terms of analysis, in terms of a deep meaning to this short story, um, first thing I'll say about this character, about Hooper, is that there could be some pride in here because when you build yourself up to be so pure, so righteous, so holy, um, you're going to feel a sense of pride. And sometimes when he smiles, it's kind of like he's coming off prideful, right? Um, if you know the story, um, certain stories in the Bible or the story of Job, uh, you know that when you're when you feel like you're holy when you feel like you're doing everything right you start to think that you're above everyone and you're and you're more righteous than you are and you start to think that you're going to heaven right away so if you read closely you can say that there's some you know there's some pride on his in his character that he's so holy and that he's kind of like separating himself from the world because you know he is there's a veil between him and the world he can't even see other people clearly he can't see the, the world clearly because he keeps the veil on at all times i mean he won't even look at himself in in, in the mirror 
Uh, so, so there's a lot to his pride and to his character there. Um, the, the other thing that's really significant about this character is that um, it, it's really interesting how important this piece of cloth is. Um, imagine this piece of cloth that covers pretty much, I would say, 75% of his face um, pretty much turned this whole community against him. I mean, a, a cloth shouldn't be that important, but the people couldn't see past it. The people just rumors and, and, and theories and ideas and conspiracies and all these types of things, they they dwelled on that rather than trying to, to see what he was trying to, the statement he was trying to um, place in front of them with the veil. Because he was trying to show everybody and tell everybody that you're all sinners, you're all hiding sins, you're all pretty much fake, right? Um, so he was trying to send a message to them, um, and, and they never got that because even the ministers themselves, they were all just trying to figure out what's behind the veil, um, they were focusing on him and his sins and what he's done wrong and the reason why why he was wearing the veil in the first place rather than focusing on themselves. Um, so this town, and for me, another thing is that this town represents just, just the reality. Um, we as human beings, we, we love gossip. Uh, we love drama. We love to focus on things, on things that don't pertain to our lives. Um, so we will spend days, hours binging, on, on the, the the matters of the world and, and and people's problems rather than ourselves when when Hooper was trying to get everybody in this town to focus in on their secret sins um, but they never really do they just keep focusing on him until he dies um, so that's that's quite significant um, it, it also speaks to you know how weak people can be because I mean Elizabeth just because Hooper had this cloth she decides not to marry him when she indeed loved him, right? This woman who wanted to have his kids, wanted to marry him, because um, again, this is, these are Puritans. When you get married, you get married forever. There's no divorce. You're gonna have a lot of kids. You're gonna praise God. That's your life. Um, especially the Puritans were not about romance and love. The Puritans were about Bible, 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 okay? It's about your Bible. You're gonna have kids. You're gonna get married. You're gonna stay in that marriage forever. Um, it wasn't about, you know, head over heels of romance, right? Um, but she, even though she loved Hooper, she couldn't, you know, get over the fact of the veil and she was afraid of the veil, which is in many ways quite ridiculous because you can't say you love someone and then you decide not to marry them because they have a, cloth, a piece of cloth on their face and she was afraid of it and the town was afraid of it. But but for, for in my perspective, I think that they were more afraid of... Um, you know, confronting their own secret sins. Because some people, you know, you try to like hide your secret sins so much that you try not to think about them. You bury them in your mind. You bury them in your mental vault so that you don't confront them. You know, they don't hurt you. Um, you don't analyze yourself in your life. Um, and seeing Hooper in the town, it was a constant reminder of things that they were doing wrong, and, and a lot of people didn't want to deal with that. Uh, so this short story kind of ends in in a place where there's no really, you know, definite answer of what's going on and, and why Hooper is doing this. Uh, maybe he's just doing it because he wants to, you know, give his congregation a statement about secret sins, uh, you know, make a statement on secret sins to his congregation. Uh, maybe he did a, 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 a horrific sin. Maybe he committed a horrific sin himself. Something that, that he was trying to punish himself for. Uh, you know, th there's a lot there. And, and different interpreters, um, different people who analyze this short story has analyzed, have analyzed it in different ways. Uh, but it, it, from my perspective, I think that, um, you know, it, it says a lot about uh, the, town, the town. It says a lot about just culture and, and community. Um, and how people just like to focus on other people rather than themselves. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, an, the ending is, is ambivalent. It's not a, a straight answer. Um, it can be interpreted in different ways. Um, and yeah, that's my summary analysis on this work by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in my next video.